And I would like to give you a little bit of uh, overview of um, the ICAMP summer schools so that seeing what uh, we did in the past, you will also get a better idea uh, about what to expect from this summer school as well as you will realize hopefully that you should be not just passive participants, you know, waiting what will happen next um, of the summer school, but active participants um, who will, uh, to a large extent, define the summer school, right? So you'll see we count on you um, in organizing many activities yourself, um, and so self-organizing activities is also an important part of the summer school. Um, so, as you can see uh, from what we have here on this slide, uh, the goal of this summer school is to combine advanced education um, uh, with learning about history and culture of different nations around the world. Uh, this time we are here in South Africa and we are hopeful to learn a little bit more about the culture and history of this country in addition to learning about topology, biophysics, soft dense metaphysics, and so on. Right, and so um, um, let me show you a little bit about the past summer schools. Um, uh, so here you can see uh, the logo, One World, One Dream, um, and who can remind what, uh, uh, what logo was it, also of what as an important event in the past, not very uh, past history, uh, logo it was. Anybody? It was the logo of uh, Beijing Olympics in, that took place in China some years ago, right? And uh, um, uh, and so our first summer school was uh, taking place in China around that time too. Uh, so we, we thought about uh, um, some synergy in um, the, uh, um, the two events at that time. Um, and so uh, um, the first summer school, as you can see, was in China. It took place in four different cities. Um, uh, then we also organized it in Australia, Sydney and Brisbane. Uh, then later it, the summer school traveled to um, Argentina and Uruguay, and just like here, because it's in South Hemisphere, um, the summer school was actually winter school uh, in the place where it took place. Um, uh, then uh, uh, in 2012, we uh, held it in the US, in Boulder, Colorado. Last year, the school was organized in Cambridge, in uh, the UK, um, and so here we are this year in South Africa. Um, so, as I already mentioned, in 2009, uh, the summer school was taking place in China, and at around that time, the funding in China for, for science and uh, technology was growing very fast, so Chinese scientists were very eager to showcase um, all the modern um, equipment they got in the labs and so on, and so uh, so many different universities were interested in helping us in organizing the summer school that we were able to uh, to hold it in uh, have it in four different uni uh, four different cities and um, about twelve different universities helped with organizing it in China. Um, so uh, um, the summer school is not only just about the scientific part are, but also, um, uh, as you can see from this slide in here, uh, we have a lot of cultural activities as well. Um, and so you can see how during this summer school, for example, the students were learning Chinese calligraphy, there were uh, lessons of Chinese dancing involved, um, and also lots of tours uh, and so on. Um, but many of those activities, as I already mentioned, were organized by students themselves. Um, <clears throat> so here, a little bit more uh, pictorial examples of uh, what we had at that summer school. Um, so, for example, Forbidden City Tours, you can see in here, um, um, were also part 
of the summer school, not just um, uh, the conventional activities like lectures and uh, poster sessions. Um, the 2010 summer school uh, here was in Australia, and again uh, we had lots of cultural activities, Australian barbecue, uh, different tours of zoos and um, uh, <coughs> Uh, the Sydney, uh, Sydney Bridge climbing, uh, we had a Bush Band concert. Uh, around that time, we also had a, a World Football Cup, and uh, uh, the students organized their, their own mini World Football Cup. So there were some soccer games, uh, as well as um, they organized themselves to watch different football games from the World Cup. So around that time, I believe the World Cup was taking place here in South Africa. Is that correct? In 2010? Yeah, I think so. Right? So, uh, <laughs> interestingly enough, four years later we came here with the summer school. Um, and uh, there were also some surfing lessons, uh, discussions of collaborative projects, dancing lessons, lab tours, as you can see examples in here. Um, and uh, so on, many other activities too. Um, you can see also a preview of some um, tours that we had in Argentina and Uruguay. Um, so those are what you see here, famous Iguazu, Iguazu Falls in Argentina that we also visited as a part of that summer school. Um, <clears throat> the ICAM 2012 was taking place in the University of Colorado, and again, uh, we had a lot beyond the, the scientific part of it. Uh, so many tours to uh, the nearby Colorado mountains, Rocky Mountains in Colorado, um, and many activities, as I mentioned, were organized through Facebook uh, by students themselves. So I know that many of you signed up uh, to the ICAMP 2014 Facebook account. And um, uh, so we hope that, again, we'll be able to have many self-organized activities with the help of Facebook as well this year. Um, so here you can see uh, some images from the uh, last summer school we had in Cambridge and Colorado. And so, for example, the tours of different colleges as well as punting uh, on the Cam River were important parts of the summer school beyond the science component, of course. Um, <coughs> so typically, we record all the lectures of the summer school as well as collect the PowerPoint or PDF files of the presentations from speakers so that those can be posted um, on the web page of the summer school and later on, five or ten years later, you still can go to the summer school web page and watch a video of the lecture. Or you can direct your colleagues in laboratory in your university who would like to learn uh, from, those, um, um, from those lectures, um, which, as I already mentioned, will be available online. Uh, interestingly enough, from some of the summer schools in the past, we have around 15,000 views per video, per lecture. Um, some of the most popular uh, have over 10,000 viewers, right? So it's quite substantial, as you can understand. And um, not only uh, the videos of lectures will be linked to the scientific program on the web page uh, of this summer school, but also they are posted on the so-called SciV, which is essentially a YouTube for scientific videos, and um, uh, we get a lot of viewers through, through this language as well. Um, <clears throat> all right, um, so now we also use clicker technology, and uh, this will now give me an opportunity to test if clickers work. I understand that not all students who are taking part in this summer school are already here, and, uh, but the ones who already arrived, um, please take your, please have your clickers ready because now I will turn on the system and I will um, 
give you this question that's not pedagogical in nature, as you can understand. Um, uh, but um, before you start vote, what you need to do is to first press um, press the on-off button for a little bit longer until you see the um, this LED in here blinking for a little bit and then uh, press twice AA because this is the frequency of clickers that we are using here um, and once you do it um, you should see the bottom LED blinking with probably green color so once this happens it means your clicker is synchronized with our receiver and you can start voting Right, so now please select one of the answers I have here. Did you say AA for synchronizing? I'm, I don't get it. Uh, yes, AA should be resolved. It flashes green once because it's supposed to be up. Yes. Okay. Alright, so I see I got some walls. Uh, that's probably still not everybody who got the clicker and you can see some of them are working. Okay, more words. I'll give you some time. It's not an easy question. Uh, so what I also would like to mention is that those clickers travel it from Colorado, where it's very dry climate, all the way to here, when it's humid, and maybe the batteries don't have good contact. Um, so you should maybe shake a little bit, uh, because of the increased humidity, the technology might be not perfectly working here. Um, please tap it. Shake a little bit. I see we have uh, 24 volts. <laughs> All right, I'll stop the system. And so let us see what answers we got. Okay, A, B, D, E. Uh, e is most popular, as it looks like. Um, so let's see. Um, well, I'm disappointed because the correct answer is uh, C. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, okay. Um, so just a couple. Uh, reminders on what to expect from the summer school. Uh, so we have asked the speakers to give typically three, four lectures for the summer school where some of those lectures will be devoted to the fundamentals or they, they could also provide those fundamentals in the beginning of each lecture depending on how they uh, split the material they want to present to you. Right, but um, uh, unlike at the lectures of workshops or conferences uh, where you typically given with you know the uh, sort of uh, the new findings new results of the particular speaker particular presenter in here you will also be given um, the background information right the fundamentals of uh, the physics involved and then uh, there will be an overview of what's happening in the field as well as the particular findings, particular results of the speaker presenting the lectures as well. Um, so this background fundamentals part of uh, um, um, the presentations will be an important one uh, for the summer school, right? Because we expect that you are coming with different backgrounds and not necessarily would have uh, all the preparation needed to understand 
all of those lectures that will be presented, but with the enough background, you will be able to. Um, so we'll also have panel discussions um, and poster sessions. The panel discussions will give you an opportunity to ask questions and understand uh, more in depth uh, what we discussed here at the summer school. Um, and uh, we'll also have uh, the so-called outreach and career forums where um, the goal of outreach forums is to provide uh, a forum for exchanging uh, the best practices and, and experience of conducting outreach in different parts of the world. Uh, so as you know, we often get together for conferences and workshops to exchange information on uh, what the newest in science, right, what are new developments, but we rarely exchange our experience and best practices in doing outreach. So in here we'll have those forums to do exactly that. Um, and uh, uh, the goal of career development forums will be uh, to provide you a little bit more information about what's important for your career, successful careers, uh, beyond science, right? So what else you need to do to be aware of, uh, answer your questions as well, um, so that this helps you to uh, be successful in, uh, in your future careers, whether it's in, ac in academia, industry, or national labs, or whatever other career paths you choose. Um, and so as I already mentioned, we'll also have a lot of self-organizing activities. So. Um, a little bit more information from past summer school um, and um, uh, we'll also have um, informal receptions um, so here again you can see uh, some of the activities from past summer schools uh, we had in different parts of uh, the world um, so uh, uh, now uh, I would like to introduce Mark Bovik, who is one of the um, organizers of this summer school as well, and uh, um, he will uh, um, run the panel discussion, um, uh, and uh, uh, this will be also an opportunity for you to introduce yourself and ask questions that you might have at this point. Thank you.